Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to today's evening prayer. Again, it's Thursday and we are together. 27th of April, we remember Christina Rossetti, who was a poet in 1894. Before we begin, I want to thank you all who wish me happy birthday and all these lovely messages. Thank you so much for thinking of me, for being so kind. Uh, I had a lovely day with uh, my mom we, and my daughter. We went to shop. We, we went shopping, which is lovely, always a, a lovely uh, time for girls, I think. Um, it, not always. I think you have to be in a special mood to do that, but today was a good day. Um, I have a lovely, lovely time. Um, we're still holding on with the celebrations. We're not, we're not doing anything until my, my fast is finished, which is next week. Um, but that's that's subject for another um, talk. I have to tell you guys for this. I have to encourage you guys. This is this has been amazing experience. I feel I feel absolutely great. I feel better than ever. It's day thirteen. It's I never. There's so many not only physical uh, changes and benefits, but like mainly spiritual um benefits is it has been amazing i really have to find a way to, to talk to you about this and encourage you this has been a uh, absolutely amazing experience uh but for, for this kind of fasting long fasting um you need to be hearing from god you, you can't just decide I, I would never just decide to do anything like that i i was convinced i i heard it in my spirit uh, it was loud and clear um as if it was a speaking god was speaking to me and it was not audible but it was as clear as that um and i heard it in my spirit i have to do this to prepare for the future to prepare for ministry to just prepare for what's to follow uh, to humble myself that's what i mean humbling yourself uh humbling your body uh to lift up the spirit so it has been incredible I would love to talk to you more about it, but today we're not here for that. We're going to begin with um, evening prayer. Oh God, make speed to save us, so Lord may haste to help us. In your resurrection of Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. For the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph through him dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored as you call us out of darkness into his marvelous light may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song blessed be god father son and the holy spirit blessed be god forever that this evening may be holy good and peaceful let us pray with one heart and mind As our evening prayer rises before your God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 7-3 Truly God of loving, uh, loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart, nevertheless my feet were almost gone, my steps had well not slipped, for I was envious of the proud, I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as other, others are. Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within. The conceit of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only evil. They talk of oppression from on high. They set them out against the heavens, and their tongue ranges around the earth. And so the people turn to them and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Even at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleanse my heart and washed my hands in innocent 
all day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then I thought I to, uh, I to understand this. But it was too hard for me until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them a slippery place, you cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to destruction, uh, perish and come to a fearful end. It's with a dream when one awakens, so Lord, when you arise, you will despise the image. When my heart became embittered and I was uh, pierced to, uh, to the quick, I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by your right hand. You will guide me with your conceal. And afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon the earth that I desire in comparison to you. Amen. Through my flesh and my heart fail me. God in the strength of my heart and my portion forever truly those who forsake you will perish you will put to silence the faithless who betray you but it is in good but it is good for me to draw near god in the lord god have i made my refuge that i may tell of your works in the refrain in the lord god i have made my refuge holy god may find wisdom in your presence May we find wisdom in your presence and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the end in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is this is great. Glory to our Father. Amen. This is wonderful reading. Um, we I'm sure we can relate to this in one way or another. We have been. Even if you don't say it, sometimes you think it, you think, well, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm, I'm doing everything I think. Of course, we think we're doing everything great. And of course, we think you're more righteous than other people. And yes, all that. When it, No, no, it doesn't work like this. Uh, definitely, that's not a humble attitude. But sometimes you think, well, they, they, I am trying to do everything right. I'm doing everything, you know, good. Uh, I'm doing my best, and and but then I see people who are like criminals, liars, uh, cheaters. Uh, you know, they 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 steal, they they kill, destroy, and they still have a better life than me. Look at them; they're healthy, they have everything. Their kids have everything they they need. How about me? Um, and then, but then this is this is what's happening here in this psalm. Uh, but then he realizes he's like, hold on. He gets that wisdom from the Holy Spirit and he says, hold on, it's not like that. It's actually not that like that. One, These people, if they refuse to um, repent and change, they will get it one day. One day uh, uh, or another, they will get what's coming to them. But no, I have my hope. My, my, wis my hope is in you, Lord. Um, is it not amazing to know you have, like he's saying, who is in heaven? Uh, who do I have but you? Who else do you need? He, you've got the most almighty on your side. You need nobody else, for sure, to be on your side. Okay, I'm still going to read the reflection for this psalm. This psalm is written by Asaph. It expresses dismay at the uh, prospering of the wicked. How can those who pursue such cruelty and shameless evil enjoy such richness of life? It is only when Asaph lifts his eyes to God, so he shifts his focus, he lifts his eyes to God, and then he sees the total picture. When the final de uh, destruction of the wicked is considered, their present prosperity takes out new proportion. It seems to be brief, fleeting. The evil and prosper uh, prospering today then sn uh, sn snuffed out after a few seconds of this short life's existence. Yet we are still struck in the presence, watching, uh, present, watching day after day as the wicked flourish. Uh, how do we survive emotionally? This psalm gives us the beautiful solution. Whom have I in heaven but you? Hallelujah. 
and there is nothing on earth I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. How would you put this in your own words? Consider what Asaf is saying. With God, you are invincible. Nothing can touch you. Your greatest enjoyment, God, can never be taken away from you. In heaven, God is all you want and need. On earth, God is all you want and need. In death or life, in, in, in sickness or in health, even as your body wastes away towards the grave, God is all you want and need. Be at peace. Your true happiness is beyond the reach of any evil this life can bring. Hallelujah. What a good, amazing uh, way to start this evening prayer tonight. Be encouraged, brothers and sisters. Um, Old Testament reading comes from Exodus 25, and that's verses 1 to 22. The Lord said to Moses, Tell the Israelites to take, to, to take for me an offering from all whose hearts brought them to give. You shall receive an offering for me. This is the offering that you shall receive from from them gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and crimson yarn, and fine linen gold, ha hair, tanned ram skins, fine leather, acacia wood, oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, on onyx stones, and gems to be set in the ephod and for the breast piece. And have them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. In accordance with all that I show you con concerning the pattern of the tabernacle and of all its um, furniture, so you shall make it. They shall make an ark of acacia wood. It shall be two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. You shall overlay it with pure gold inside and outside. You shall overlay it and you shall make a um, molding of gold upon, the, upon it around, all around. You shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them on its four feet. Two rings on one side of it and two rings on the other side. You shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold and you shall put the poles in the rings on each side of the ark by which they carry the ark the poles shall um, to carry the ark the poles shall remain in the rings of the ark they shall not be taken out uh, taken from it you shall put in the ark the covenant and that i will give you then you shall make a mercy seat and uh, of pure gold, two cubits and a half shall be the its length, and a cubit and a half its width. You shall make two cherubim of gold. You shall make them of ham, a hammered work, work at the two ends of the mercy, mercy seat. Make one cherub uh, at one end and uh, one cherub at the other. On one piece in the mercy seat, you shall make the cherubim and its two ends. The cherubim shall spread out in the wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings. They shall face each other. Face of uh, the faces of the cherubim shall be turned towards the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on the top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the covenant that I shall give you. They will meet you. There I will meet you, and from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, and on the ark of the covenant, I will deliver you all my commandments for the Israelites. Wow, this is this is very some very very specific um, uh, instructions for a portable, movable tent. But it, it sounds amazing with everything, uh, all, uh, the way that is to be made. Um, in which God's presence will dwell amongst the, the Jewish people. Um, entirely, of course, for people's benefit, in, for, 
for, for them to know that God is there with them for their benefit. There are a lot of very, like I said, specific instruction and requirements. And he says, follow them exactly as I tell you. Um, uh, God is uh, planning to put some of the gifts that the Israelites got from the uh, Egyptians uh, in a good use. Uh, well, you know, when they were leaving Egypt, you're thinking, where are they going to get all this silver gold and all these precious things from? Uh, well, they got, they received gifts. They, you know, when they were leaving Egypt, they, God said, go and collect um, things, all these things from the Egyptian people and then go. So they're going to put those in a very good use. Um, they to build sanctuary for God. Um, for God to come and dwell with them. And um, he says, this is how you carry it. This is how you do it. The cherubim, the spread wings. I mean, it, it sounds amazing. It sounds really, really uh, wonderful and beautiful. Um, and they're going to do that next. I mean, I'm going to move on to the next reading for today, which is Luke 1, chapter 1 verse 57 to the end so luke chapter 1 verse 57 to the end which is verse 80. now the time came for elizabeth to give birth and she bore a son her neighbors and relatives this is the mother of john the baptist by the way her neighbors and relatives heard that the lord had shown his great mercy to her and uh, rejoiced and rejoiced with her on the eighth day they came circumcise the child that was the um, that was how they used to do it so the, everybody the whole village neighbors they come for this ceremony uh, all happy so it's kind of a not just circumcision ceremony but it's like a naming ceremony as well we usually by then at the end day you have to kind of give the name of the child so all of them came to circumcise the child and they were going to name him Zachariah I don't know how how come what kind of things you know last time I checked it's not other people naming your kid you name your kid it says here they were gonna going to name him Zachariah after his father but his mother said no he is to be called John they said to her none of your relatives has this name then they began um, motioning to his father to find out what the name he wanted to give him. So they like completely ignore the mom. Doesn't matter what she says. Let's ask the dad. He asked for a written tablet and wrote, his name is John. And all of them were amazed. Wow. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue freed and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all of the neighbors and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. And, and who heard, uh, all who heard them pondered and said, what then will this child become? For indeed the, the hand of the Lord was with him. Then his father Zachariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant David. He as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets for, from of all that we would be saved from an enemy and from the, the hand of all who hates us. Hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that we swore to ancestor Abraham and grant us that we being rescued from the hand of our enemies might serve him with uh, without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all uh, our days and your a new child will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his way to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins by the tender mercy of our god the dawn from on high will we, we break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit.
spirit and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. Amen. Amen. Um, Luke, okay, Luke, uh, the birth of John the Baptist. Yes, we see how they wanted, like I said, they wanted to call him Zachariah, like his father. But the mom said, no, he will be John. Um, and everyone was very surprised. Um, Zachariah couldn't uh, yet speak, as you know, um, because he, uh, you know, if you remember, he disobeyed, he disbelieved, not disobeyed, dis disbelieved the angel when the angel came and uh, told him that he will have a son. And he's like, mm, how come? We are uh, quite old, me and my wife, you know, um, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but really, are you sure? So the, he couldn't speak. So he asked for something to write um, and he he wrote down, uh, no, uh, you know, uh, his name will be John, indeed, like the mom said. And his mouth instantly opened, which scared everybody. They're like, wow, there's something bigger than we thought is happening here. Um, and the first thing, and uh, notice what happens. The first thing what happened is like, oh, my days. I, I couldn't speak for months. Oh, finally, you know, thank God. Let me, I've got so much to say. No, the first thing he said is he, he was praising the Lord. He was blessing the Lord. Um, then Zechariah says he, he was filled. So he prophesied because he was filled with the spirit. And, um, uh, you know, he started to prophesy and his words referred to the Benedictus in the church. Um, what well, just wonderful. He was uh, uh, praising the Lord uh, for what he has done and what he will do in the future. Um, He's saying this boy John the Baptist, this boy will go before him, uh, before the Lord, will prepare the way for the Lord. Then Jesus comes to give uh, light to those who are in darkness um, and, and salvation and peace to everybody. Um, and yes, and that's how we end this reading. Hallelujah. But that's the best news ever. Look, see, he was... Um, a bit of a, doubting is, is, is a bit scary thinking about it because lots of us sometimes are doubting without even realizing we're doubting God well, we're doubting whether God can do something um, uh, but eventually he he was rewarded he was he was uh, he was praising he was um, he the Holy Spirit came on him and he started prophesying it's just a beautiful thing we, we, we see so many stories like those we, again and again people they are in a, such an old age and they're saying well no there's no way i can't possibly who like uh, i'm old my wife is old we're like we're not we can't physically not possible to have children no it is possible for god there's nothing impossible maybe uh every doctor in the world can tell you this not possible something anything but no we trust in god and god alone he is the one who opens and closes women's womb he is the one who blesses he is the one who heals not a person not a doctor he can do it through doctors of course he can do it through uh things but we our trust is in him and nobody else i mean i forgot the collection so i'm gonna read it now almighty father who is the great mercy uh, who is who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen lord give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, all right, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your words. Thank you for, for your words today. Thank you for each person who is watching, who is listening. 
um, today or any other day when they watch this. Thank you. Bless them. I pray that you bless them, um, their homes, their families. Uh, bless them. Give them your wisdom. Give them your Holy Spirit. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know each uh, person's heart. You know what they need. Uh, whether it's healing, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional relief, whether it's psychological, whether it's um, just you, you keep worrying all the time and you're stressed all the time. You have troubles with work. You have troubles with your spouse. You have troubles with your children. Anything at all. Uh, give it to God. We give it to you, Lord. Just take it from us, this this heavy heaviness, this heavy load. We give it to you. We, we're asking for your Holy Spirit. And we're asking for your peace, divine peace that comes from you and you alone. We can't get it any other way. We may try with every earthly um, method. Um, but it's not going to happen. The Spirit gives us peace. So fill us with your Spirit. No, nothing else. Just your Spirit, your Holy Spirit. We're asking for this. In the name of Jesus, we're going to ask for this every single day to be filled more and more. Uh, and then and then wonders happen. And then and then we, we feel your joy. This joy and this happiness that comes from you. And people might think you're, we're crazy because um, things might be wrong. But we, we're yet happy and we're let, yet smiling and we're full of joy. But they have to understand this is your joy. This is your um, divine joy that you give us. This is a blessing. This is a gift. So God, I pray for every person who might be a bit uh, feeling a bit stressed or depressed or worried uh, and joy is not um, present in their life. I pray for this, uh, this feeling, this heaviness to be lifted in the name of Jesus. And I pray that they receive the peace and the joy of the Lord. Though this is our strength. This is our blessing. I pray for anyone who's got a heavy heart because they lost a loved one and they mourn the loss of their loved one. God, give them, give them um, conviction. Give them the, this peace in their heart that their loved one are well um, taken care of uh, and they're, they're, they're with you. And give them this um, peace. They just take any sadness, God. Take any broken heart and heal that heart jesus give them give them words give them scripture um heal their hearts and i pray for any sickness to be gone in the name of jesus relieve any pain relieve any sickness relieve any worry i thank you for each person who is here today uh, on, on this life uh, on this uh, evening prayer <laughs> and listening I thank you. I bless them. I bless their homes and their children. In the name of Jesus, I pray for each of them. Um, and I thank you for each and every person who is, is listening right now and will listen in the future. Um, give them their divine peace, Jesus. We pray for each other. We pray for the churches. We pray for the church of the world. We pray for our brothers and sisters everywhere around the world who is who are suffering and scared and they can't they're not free to meet each other they're not free to worship you the way we worship you god give us that joy give us that spirit of worship so we can worship you without thinking about everybody else without worrying about who's looking at us or, or whether i should clap or not clap whether i should lift my hand well we should stop thinking about all this we should just be led by your spirit and do whatever we feel we want to do. It's all about you. It's not. None of this is about any of us. None of this is about any of us. Um, and God, um, we pray for, for the church in the world. We pray for, for the people in the world. For, for the wars. We pray for the end of these wars happening everywhere around the world. Uh, uh, we keep praying for this god it's just it's just terrible we we want the end to this we want 
We pray for wisdom for these people, for these all these leaders who are deciding these things in the, all these people in charge we pray um for for this for this peace. give them give them peace um in their mind give them the wish to end this senseless killing uh give, give them the wish give them a way to achieve this we pray this in your name. We pray for protection of our homes. We pray for protection protection of our minds, of our families. We thank you for your protection every single day. We love you, Jesus, and we praise your name. Thank you for the opportunity to be together. Thank you for the fact that we are free to meet and worship every day if we want to. I know we do it on Sunday, but we are free to do it every time we want to do it. And that is amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We know that this is important. This is church is important. Being together, sharing things together, just, just being together, loving each other is very important. So help us to love each other, help us to forgive, help us to move forward, help us because forgiveness is this this frees us, us. We we are we 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 when we have unforgiveness in our hearts, we this is like a stop for us. This is like a stop. We can't move forward. Um it's hindering blessings for our lives. So help us to forgive, help us to move forward. We thank you um, and we praise you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. We say together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the sorry, for the power, the the glory, um, for the evil, uh, for the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. I mean, sorry, I got distracted. Somebody's trying to call me. Um, May the risen Christ grant us the choice of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is this is it. Commercials out of nowhere. They like to pop in. You know, I realized you can pay. Uh, we can you can pay for membership, uh, something a seven eight pounds a month, and never have to deal with commercials again. I'm not yet prepared to do that, so I do apologize. We have this uh, situation where commercials pop out in the worst possible time. We try again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. Today um, is one of those third try, lucky, hey?
Hallelujah. Yes, I mean, it was a pleasure to be together again um, today on Thursday. We'll see you next time. Bless you all. Good night. Have a good sleep. Bye.